Hi, everyone. I'm Lynn Ozer, president of Multifunding, and we are here today with our next um, Omnisite podcast. And I'm so excited, I can't even really talk. I have today as our guest, Cassandra Bailey from Slice Communications. Cassandra is the founder, the owner, the CEO, the president of this company that has done so many incredible things. I've had the privilege of knowing Cass for a while, and I'm so excited that all of our listeners are going to get a chance to get to know her a little better. So welcome. Thank Cass, you. How are you? I, I am great, and I am just so happy to be spending time with you. Uh, and I am so happy that the world's going to get to listen to your story because I know a lot of it, but I am so excited for them to hear how you got to where you are. Your background is not exactly, you know, it doesn't scream business. And you have taken your really, your interpersonal skills and your knowledge and just exploded. So let's start well, not all the way from the beginning, but what what were you going to do when you got out of college and what was your major? So when I went into college, I thought I was going to be a lawyer. That was yeah. the thing that everybody, when I was a kid growing up, were like, oh, you talk and you talk a lot. We see you being <laughs> an attorney, which I yeah. think happens a lot to little kids who are very verbal like I was. Yeah. So I, I went to college and I got a degree in international politics, economics and philosophy. Right. Um, and decided that I did not need to go to any more school, that I was yeah. completely done with school and I, I needed a break. And that's yeah. when I decided that maybe pursuing the law was not right for me. And law law school at that time certainly was not right for me. So I, uh, I found an opportunity actually working in economic development. And that was really neat because I had the opportunity to work with people on economic policy and growth. And I got to work with startups and venture capital and seed funding. And that just met so many of my interests in a lot of good ways. That's terrific. So where were you? Were you still living in Washington at the time or you came back to this area? Philly, I came back the to the area. Philly area. Yeah, mm -hmm. where I, I grew up in South Jersey. Oh, Most right. of my family was here and um, my grandmother was sick at the time and she was one of my soulmates in life. And I decided I wanted to be close to her. So the economic development agency that I worked with at the time was here in Philly. And that's that's how I came back. That's great. So then how did you make the transition from employee to employer? So the first thing <laughs> there's I did, a lot that went in between. <laughs> th there, there was um, when I was working in economic development, I started as an assistant in the marketing department. I was an executive assistant. Mm -hmm. um, it was a small organization, though, so I had the opportunity to manage our PR firm, our web development agency, our creative firm. And I realized through working with those amazing professionals that I loved what they did and I wanted to go work with them. Like I really wanted to move into that world. World, especially the PR media relations world. So I got the opportunity from there to go work for an agency. And I loved agency life. And the thing about agency life is I think you either love it or you hate it. Mm -hmm. And for me, the diversity of working with different clients and having every day be a different day really stimulated my brain in a lot of ways. And like you said, put some of my interpersonal skills to use and made me realize that, hey, that thing that I did from the time I was a kid, which was talking all of the time, was really <laughs> valued in an agency setting. That's right. It's great. All right. So go on. After you were working in an agency, you then took the started next Started an agency. Yeah. Started an agency uh, with a business partner. Decided that at the time... I had a background in media relations. I've been doing media relations and I recognized that social media was going to be this new emerging way for companies to interact with people. And so Slice was founded on that point of view, that media relations and social media really should work hand in hand, that both of them are ways for companies to talk with people. Um, media relations primarily through reporters and producers and social media directly with people. And so the agency was founded to bring those two things together. And how long ago was that? It, and I'm trying to remember, I, I met you, I think when you were, you, you and your business partner went separate ways, correct? That's right. So the agency was initially founded about 15 years ago. Um, terrible time to start a business, really rough. <laughs> 
but we had a niche and we had a focus and we fortunately had a very, very good network. So the business started, it grew, and then we actually sold a majority of the business. We sold 51%. That did not work out. And you're right, when I met you, it was just as I had bought the company back. So I bought it back from the acquiring partner. I bought it back from my co-founder and became 100% owner. And that was in 2014. So almost 10 right. years ago. And thank God, Lynn, for you and your team, because at the time right. I had no financing. I had no line of credit. We had no office. Like I didn't know what we were going to do, but uh, you you were there <laughs> like a safety net in that moment. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about that, because I think sure. um, a lot of our listeners are interested in how you you actually go and start a business. And and then you find out you're walking down this path. Everything's going well. And you sell your business, which a lot of people think that that's the ultimate is to build the asset and sell it. And then here you are in a position to buy it back mm -hmm. and and go out on your own. What what was it like? Were you scared? Um, what were you thinking? It you was know, working with somebody else and you just knew that you could it do was, it yourself. It was not working. There were a lot of things that I learned in that sale um, in terms of being the company that was acquired. So I did, and my partner and I did almost no, no due diligence on the company that was acquiring us. We didn't ask about or look at their books or their financials. We didn't ask or look at really their structure. We didn't ask about or look at their culture. There were all of these things that we didn't do. And you know, it was probably because we were young and naive and we thought that selling was the cool, sexy thing to do. And so we overlooked a lot of the business questions we should have asked. Well, that's so, a good lesson for everyone. Yeah, yeah, we also didn't really understand the function that we were going to play in in the acquiring business. Mm -hmm. We didn't understand uh, the value that we would bring to them. They didn't truly understand the value that we would bring either or how our, our services would be integrated into what they were doing. None of that was really laid out. And so, right, yeah, lots lots of landmines uh, that we walked into mm -hmm. um, and, and lots of ways that the business just wasn't going to work. So it took about a year, a little over a year to recognize that it wasn't a good fit and that there were a lot of challenges that were being created by the acquisition and not a whole lot of opportunities. And so that's why I decided to, to buy the company back and to take it in a, in a different direction. And yes, it was terrifying. We had moved into their office. We had integrated all of our books, all of our IT, all of our HR. They were managing it all for us. And suddenly I was in a position where I had to take it back and rebuild it. And all wow. of our banking relationships as well. And, and that put us in a really rough spot. Did you have employees at the time? I did. Yeah, I think we had eight employees at the time. Now, were you able to keep their jobs or did they go to work for the acquirer? What happened? The thing that I am most proud of, Lynn, through that whole 14 months of craziness is that when I bought the company back, even though we were losing money, <laughs> which I realized once I got my eyes on the books again, uh, not a single employee lost their job or missed a paycheck. Oh, that's wonderful. It That's was a challenge and there was a right. lot of sacrifice and a lot of trust on their part right. in me and what we were doing with the company, but we, we were able to turn it around. So you, you learned a lot about owning and running a business through the school of hard knocks. Um, you did not necessarily uh, know everything that you were getting yourself into. Tell everybody about um, your entrepreneurial education experiences. I know for a fact you went through um, a couple of different interesting um, types of training, not conventional, but tell us about that. Sure. So because I went to college for international politics, right. I have never taken a business course in my entire life, nor right. had I ever taken a marketing course. And so like a lot of entrepreneurs, I started the business because I could do a service and I thought I could do it well, exactly. not because I could run a business, which is a 
totally different thing. And so I, I recognized when I bought the business back, how much I didn't know. And like you said, it was a school of hard knocks. So that year when I bought it back, I had the opportunity to do the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small businesses program, yes. which was wonderful and insightful. And I also had the opportunity through WeBank to do a program at the Tuck School, um, which is an incredible business school. Um, and I was there for a full week learning basics of, of business, things like how to look at a P&L, how to really know what EBITDA is, how to recognize your um, debt to income ratio, all of these things that I didn't know. I didn't even know right. the terminology, what my costs of goods sold were and how to recognize what is a good ratio in terms of cost of goods sold related to overhead for an agency business like mine. I got to learn all of those things, thankfully, because the Goldman Sachs program and because we are a certified woman-owned business and, um, and really amazing <laughs> educators were willing to work with me and other women-owned businesses to help us learn these things. That, that's great. So the the importance of mentorship has really helped to boost your business. Absolutely. Yes. Thank God I've had some amazing mentors and people who are willing to invest their time in me, other women business owners, but then also other entrepreneurs in the agency world. Because otherwise, I don't know that I would have been able to make the leap from practitioner to business owner. I don't think I ever would have understood the difference between a lifestyle business and a growth or scaling business. Uh, um, and I mean, music to Ami's ears. That's the <laughs> they are two different things. Right. I mean, you know that, Lynn, right? Yeah. But I didn't know that when I started. And uh, I have some amazing mentors who who have taught me a lot about those two different things and how you approach them very differently in terms of being a business owner and an entrepreneur. And since you are a business owner and you do have to balance life and family and all of that, um, you, how do you do it all? <laughs> uh, some days better than others. <laughs> I, I, I'm also a member of uh, EO, the Entrepreneurs Organization now, as I know Ami is as well. And a number of listeners of your podcast, a number of guests of your podcast are also EO members. Absolutely. And through, through EO, I was introduced to the concept of balance is an unrealistic expectation. <laughs> it just is, right? Like, right. And everybody has to define balance differently for themselves. And then they're hard on themselves when they feel like something is out of balance. Um, in EO, some people have taught me much more about this idea of harmony that the two coexist, that your business and your life are able to coexist. That's and a that, great way to describe it. Yeah. And it's much more of a yin and yang where there are sometimes where the business needs more of you. And right. there's sometimes where your life or your family needs more of you. And there's sometimes that your charities need more of you. And making your business structure and operate in a way that when other parts of your being need you, you can give it to them will make your business more rewarding for you. And I've been very fortunate that uh, I've learned a lot about that approach. You, you are amazing. And the list of nonprofits and charities that you work for is incredible. It's not, and it continues to evolve. I think you go there and inject your energy and make a difference. I know that you don't have a list of boards and charities that you work with just to do that. I know because I've been on them with you. You put everything into it. How do you choose which which one's going to get the benefit of Cass Bailey? Oh, Lynn, you're too generous. No, uh, no, but, no. <laughs> but I will say like I do, I do have an approach to choosing where I spend my time. So I have learned so much about business management and leadership through boards that I've gained way more than I've given, way more. The first time I was ever forced to read a, a PL was when I was sitting on a board and to understand the different parts of bookkeeping and to understand like, how is this organization going to continue to operate? Like I had the great opportunity to learn those things before I even started my business a little bit, a little bit through sitting on boards. I also learned a lot about leadership transition. I was in two situations where we had to exit out an executive director from two different nonprofit organizations, how to interview for the new executive director, how to second 
set goals, how to look for what we needed in a leader. Um, and so I had the great opportunity to be able to do a lot of interviewing in my role at, on on different boards. So when I think about boards, I look at what am I gonna what am I gonna learn from them? What am I gonna right. learn from the structure or the size of the organization? Uh, what am I gonna learn from the other board members as well? What am I gonna learn that I can apply to my business? So I look at right. that. Then I look at how it aligns with my passion. Right. right. What is it? What is it about this organization that gets me up in the morning that makes me excited to talk to other people about it and right. to record it uh, to to recruit other board members? That's so right. I have a real passion around literacy, around reading, around children, around technology. All of those things are important to me. And then the last thing that I look at is really thinking about how can I provide a special skill to this organization that they do not have today? So my special skill is primarily these days in marketing and communication sure, for social sure. media. So do they do they need that? Do they need my special skill? And so when I consider a nonprofit, I look at those three things. What am I going to learn from them? Do they need my special skill? And does it ignite my passion? All right. Uh, they, those are such important things. And it's so, I feel like when you're giving back like that, it just enriches everything that you do. And bring so much to your organization. I think you've said it perfectly. Let's talk about what I think is a really exciting um, invention. That's not really the right word, but creation of yours. And that's Social Media Day. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you got started? Because that's really your project, right? It is. So yeah. I did not create Social Media Day. It was I thought you by, did. Well, let me tell you the story. <laughs> okay, tell us It was created the story. by a media organization called Mashable. Oh. Mashable.com. It was a tech website. Um, and the guy who started it and, and some of his team decided to start Social Media Day, which was intended to be a global day of celebrating and doing professional development around the social media industry. And different chapters around the world or different organizations around the world would host a Social Media Day celebration. It actually began in 2008. When I bought Sliceback in 2014, um, we were approached by a group of people in Philadelphia who wanted to do a panel, um, conversation and networking event for Social Media Day, like to have a Philly instance of it. And I said, sure, right? And we supported it. And then in 2015, we realized nobody was doing anything. So we decided to take the torch and because we believe and I believe that Philadelphia has an amazing community of digital communicators and social media professionals and that we needed to be elevated and celebrated and have opportunities to network and grow together. So in 2015 is when we started, when Slice started hosting the first social media day conference. Okay. That's what you created, the social media conference here in Philadelphia. Here in I Philadelphia. stand corrected. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. But the, the I can't take credit for the idea for right. it. Take, okay, but maybe you a little did. bit of credit for starting to get people excited in this area around right. it. Right. So we hosted the the first one in the first like big conference that we put on was in 2015, and we were hoping to get 100 people, and we got I think 380 uh, that that year, and it was just like an incredible opportunity to bring these people together, and it was inspiring, and it was thought provoking, and it was a really cool thing to do for the community. So we did it every year for a number of years grew it. It became, it became like a thing to a do thing. every year. And, and people started coming from all different parts of the country. And then uh, we decided two things. One, I knew I wasn't going to do it forever. Two, we knew that it needed to be more than just a day. And we needed like year round support for this community. And three, I knew that like Slice as an organization, we had some other priorities. We were growing in some different ways. And so in 2020, we uh, spun it out as its own 501c3, recruited a board of director, directors, an incredible group of people, started doing year-round year programming. And actually this past uh, 
June 30th, I passed the baton to our new board chair, um, an incredible awesome. woman named Tiffany Wilson, who runs social media at Comcast. I mean, she is inspiring. I get goosebumps just saying her name. And she is the new board chair. And Wonderful. And board are, are moving the organization forward in a way that is sustainable and hopefully will exist for many, many years well after I'm done working in social media. No, that's exciting. So the 501c3 is formed out of your idea to, to bring this to so do they do events all during the year or are they just the 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 um company exists to provide services to your industry is that how it works so there are events happening all throughout the year now the conference happens at the, the big annual conference will happen at the in end june. of june right yep in October, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have our Social Media Masters Awards. Oh, so social good. media professionals are going to be recognized for their That's amazing great. work through awards. Uh, we host a super meetup in January with a lot of other marketing, advertising, and PR organizations where we get them all together, all the members of all these organizations together. And Social Media Day is the organizer for that. So that happens in January. Mm -hmm. um, and we've become a membership organization. So there's a, a mentoring program that's part of it. And we're working on adding some additional events throughout the year. But but the big three are the super meetup, the annual conference, and the awards program. That's great. That's great. So let's get back a little bit more to Slice itself, um, you know, growing that business. So now how many employees do you have? 22. Anyway, We're at 22. You had eight in, originally, and now you're up to 22. Yeah. That's so full-time employees, right? That's right. That's right. And then we do have a network of uh, freelancers and right. also an intern program um, as well. That's fabulous. Let's talk about that intern program that you have. I think that it's it's a great way of giving back, of teaching and giving people in this area. There's plenty of universities and students who need internships in Philadelphia, which I'm sure that's for our listeners all over. How did you start the intern program? I know that some people feel like interns like take away too much. And I know that it's so important for them having been a mother and knowing the kids need internships. But what tell us about the intern program and how it helps your business. Well, we've been really lucky to have your daughter counted <laughs> as one of our yeah. interns. Yeah. And so we've had the intern program for a very long time. I was mm -hmm. very fortunate. Uh, to to have taken advantage of some incredible internships when I was in college. And right. really my internships were the opportunities to learn practical things, but right. also to network with people um, right. that were already in the professional world that wouldn't have ac have ha wouldn't have had access to otherwise. So our intern program, we run um, three different intern classes, if you will, throughout the course of the year. We have spring, summer, and fall. And we usually have anywhere from six to eight interns. And even through the pandemic, we were able to offer those internships virtually and That's continue amazing. to be able to offer virtual internships. We look for interns primarily in four areas. We look for content writers who are interns and give them an opportunity and a lot of feedback on their writing, but the opportunity to really write for clients and businesses and get a lot of coaching and guidance around what works and what doesn't work in writing for digital marketing. We look for interns in community management and social media. So those that are out there listening and posting and researching trends and opportunities. Um, we have interns in graphic design now as well. Uh, and interns in uh, media relations. So yeah. who want to learn That's how great. to reach reporters. Um, our, interns, our interns tend to be with us somewhere between 10 and 12 weeks. They each get an individualized um, member of our full-time team as their coach and mentor. That's and great. the best part is that we have hired from our internship program quite a few of our full-time employees. That's in amazing. Fact, yeah, Marissa, who is our vice president of digital marketing, was an intern with us. Isn't that great? Um, as well as as well as Caroline, our director of social media, and Jenna, who's one of our uh, community managers in social media. She was an intern recently who became a full time employee. So we love yeah. hiring from our internship pool. That's terrific. Now, you mentioned COVID and virtual. How does that affect your business? Do you 
I remember you had an office. Do you have an office where everyone is now or do you mainly work um, virtually? The advantage that our business had is that most of us are native digital communicators. So when we went virtual, right. yes, I mean, we already had our technology in place. We knew how to do it. We were already running some virtual meetings, but really our, our team is used to communicating digitally. So we, we, we're at an advantage there. Sure were, yes. In terms of how we operate today, uh, I think it was in 2021, some members of our team wanted to have an office. Mm -hmm. So whereas we had closed down our office, our, our lease had expired in 2020. So we were able to close it down pretty efficiently. Um, we, we were fortunate. We were fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we opened an office in a co-working space in Center City in October 2021. And anybody who wanted to work there could work there. At the end of 2022, we acquired another agency out of Delaware they had been in the office, um, but the owner of that business retained their office space, and we opened a co-working space in Wilmington as well. Um, we opened an office in a co-working space. Our policy today is um, pretty much a choose-your-own-adventure policy. So if you're going to be better working from home, you can work from home. That said, we are a very client-centric organization. So if the clients need you on site for something, you go on site for something. You take right. the precautions and you make sure that you're going to be safe and healthy, yeah. but we really need to be responsive to our clients. Other than that, people can kind of work as, as they're going to be the most efficient and the most productive and the most right. creative because those are the things that we care about. Right. I think that's the, the best approach. A lot of businesses that we talk to don't have that um, well, first of all, a lot of them had difficulty switching to virtual. And then now that they are, some people don't want to go back and so forth. But you said something that I think would be interesting to talk about, and that's a business acquisition. So you went from being acquired to being the acquirer. And tell us about that experience. We had put our toes in the water a little bit, I think back in 2018 or 2019, where we had acquired a book of business. We'd acquired some accounts from another right. agency. They okay. decided that they were getting out of the social media business and we bought those accounts. And we learned a lot from that. It was a good way to like test and to try out this idea of acquiring accounts. In that acquisition, we didn't acquire any people or business or intellectual property, just accounts. But it was, okay. it was interesting to do the due diligence and to put a business model together and to do the valuation of those accounts and to do right. an earn out arrangement. And, and so we learned a lot from it. And then in, I guess it was early 2021, we decided as a leadership team that we wanted to explore growing through acquisition. In our business, in digital communications and public relations, there are some amazing entrepreneurs who started their businesses 20 years ago and ready to be done. They're ready to be done. And we were fortunate to be in a good cash position to take a look at this and say, hey, is this a way that we want to grow? Um, and so we, we were thinking about it as a leadership team and put some goals around it for uh, 2022. And out of the blue, I got a message one day from an old consultant of mine who said, hey, Cass, would you, would you ever think about like growing through acquisition? Like, would you ever acquire a firm? And I was like, ooh. <laughs> something is happening that you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're getting a signal <laughs> I'm getting a signal yeah right. yeah so I got in touch um with a wonderful entrepreneur named Bridget who owned an agency called Gillespie Hall and and she had had it for about 20 years and she wanted to make sure that her clients and her team were going to be in a good place even as she moved on into that next phase of her life so we started talking in February Mm -hmm. Went through a whole series of due, dil due diligence and financial analysis and really looking at what would we need in terms of retention and were the, and answering a lot of those questions that I did not ask when I sold the business. Were the cultures aligned? Were the people right. aligned? Were, were the clients aligned? What would this look like in terms of changing their business systems and which ones would we keep and which ones would we merge into what we had to do? And so we took about 10 months to go through that due diligence process. And then That's at the great. end of 2022, completed the acquisition. And so, uh, yeah, we're about nine, almost 10 months into the acquisition. And we've done some really cool work together. And uh, we won Best Places to Work this year. for our That's awesome. Culture. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and so still learned a lot, learned a lot through this acquisition, but generally it's been very successful. Uh, for that, us. That's that, that's really exciting. So mm -hmm. then that makes you um, interested in possibly doing it again, right? We are. We are interested in doing it again. Yeah. I mean, there have to be a lot of boxes checked and a lot of conversations around cultural alignment and people alignment and client alignment. But right. I feel like we're getting to the point where, yeah, we'll be able to to do another one in the future. Let's talk one minute here, because you said it a few times about culture. Mm. I remember the first time that I was in your offices way back when, and there, I remember writing down, I don't know if there was six or eight on a, there was a chalkboard of yeah. things that were really important. Um, are they still important? And talk about culture and, and how how did you evaluate the culture of the company that you're purchasing as compared to your own? So company values continue to be important to us. We actually have changed them quite a bit since you were yeah. in our office and saw them on the chalkboard. And when we brought the two companies together this time, we actually reinvented our company values together. Um, we went through That's a whole great. series of exercises to really articulate like what makes us different and special as an organization. And we currently have four core company values. And when we're evaluating people to join the, the agency, when we're interviewing, we look at those core company values and we say, do they live these values? Right. We um, actually review them every quarter. We just had our quarterly all team meeting a couple of days ago and we recognized people and gave out values awards for people who live those values. That's when we cool. do reviews with our employees, we say, are you living these values or are you not? And a lot of times if people aren't working out in the agency, it's because of a values issue that they don't truly live those values. So our four company values that we've created, um, we are, we're a goal oriented organization. We set goals, we set goals and we check in every week in terms of how we're doing against those goals. We are just those people. Like there are some people in life who are really goal driven and that's us. Right. Um, our second core company value is continuous learning. We want people who always want to learn new things. We invest right. heavily in coaching professional development and something we call Slice University. And Slice University is an ongoing monthly continuing ed program where we bring in external experts or somebody from inside the agency decides they wanna teach something to everybody else. So continuous oh, learning great. and Slice University, yep, yep. We, that's what we want. We want people who are always reading books or articles or bringing new things to the table. Um, we have a company value, which is called co-pilot attitude. Uh, this is a unique one, sometimes takes some explanation, but we think of our job to sit in the cockpit with our clients, to sit shoulder to shoulder with them, to sometimes like we have to take the wheel and say, okay, we're going to land this plane for you. Sometimes they take the wheel and say, okay, we're going this way, but really to be that co-pilot with them and to help them co-create where we're headed and what we're doing. And then our last core company value is what we call yes and energy. And if you're familiar with improv at all, there's this core fundamental principle in improv called yes and, which is about always accepting what's happening and then building on it. And so we are looking for people who see something and they're not a no but person. They are a yes and let's think about this or yes and let's approach it this way or That's yes great. and I can build on that in this way. We're like we want that energy, that like proactive, productive, positive, creative energy coming from our team. So those are the four company values. And you can see how like it's very clear when you talk to somebody, do they have yes and energy or not? Are they willing to be the co-pilot or not? That's are they great. dedicated to continuous right. learning or not? Are they goal oriented or do they not care about goals at all? And they just want right. to do the day to day, right? right? So those four things really are the pillars of what our company is and who we want to be. And so while those four values weren't articulated in that way, when we made the acquisition, we had a sense of that. We were right. able to pick up on those things in the team members of the agency that we were going to acquire and also their willingness to co-create and to create together as part of this new combined company, the values that really matter to us and then to adhere to those values. Well, you are a shining example of all four of them wrapped up into one. Um, and that's always been you. I wouldn't have 
necessarily been able to articulate them in four concise categories. But from the beginning, what I said, you know, about your your innate abilities, besides, you know, your education in whatever it was you were studying, <laughs> brought you to this incredible place. Cass, I've learned so much just by talking to you today, things that I didn't even really know. And I appreciate everything that you shared with our audience from, you know, being acquired and acquiring and how to choose boards and how to, how to make culture the center of your business. It's been a wonderful um, interview. I hope that everyone out there has enjoyed it. Please tell us how everyone can get in touch with you and your company. Sure. I'm one of the easiest people to find on the internet, Lynn, and that um, is intentional. Not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> if you look up Cass Bailey or Slice Communications, you should find me, but our website is slicecommunications.com. I'm on LinkedIn. Certainly find me there. I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, or you can email me at cbailey at slicecommunications.com. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure to have you today. Thank you, Lynn. It was so great spending this time together. I appreciate you, you so much. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Hi.